welcome to my channel if you haven't been here before i make upcycled clothes and purses and things out of thrifted and discarded unwanted items i sold for about 10 years on ebay and etsy uh, but now i just am having so much fun doing tutorials and teaching you how to do it this dress is what we're working on today and it's completely made out of an old wedding dress and thrifted items um it has lots of lace beautiful sort of ribbon corset I'm gonna show you how okay so I'm gonna be turning an old wedding dress into something fresh and new kind of a hippie boho style but first I got to tell you quickly that this dress was given to me by my girlfriend's mom she was um, married in 1954 and she was tired of storing this big box and didn't want to give it to Goodwill, to just anybody. And when she found out that I upcycle, she told her daughter, my friend, give it to her and let her do whatever she wants and just breathe new life into it. And I'm so excited to do it. So first I'm going to tell you about the box for one second. She bought this at a store called Lumarges in Clinton, Iowa, but it was shipped from New York, Railway Express. Another label on here says 1954 and the declared value of the dress was $50. So I think it's so interesting and I'll never get rid of this box. Maybe I'll just cut the top off and save it because I just love that. But the dress that I'm going to be working with is just, well, this lady was tiny. You can tell this dress, I don't know, probably a size zero in real life. It has so it's kind of a tr traditional style with lots of beautiful chantilly lace lots of tool lots of buttons on the back and um, this will be the main lace that i will use on the new dress but inside this box there's extra tool that came from the veil and there are two slips and they are just like this thin sort of gauzy cotton and it's a beautiful eyelet fabric with uh, embroidery and there's two of them and so these will definitely be part of the new dress um so i'm just gonna show you kind of step by step how i did it this is kind of artsy and subjective so i'm going to show you how i do it but you if you give this a try you have your own wedding dress you know thrift stores sell them almost every thrift store i go into you, you can find a wedding dress um so let's get started so we are mainly going to work with this wedding dress to create our boho hippie dress and I like to make things easy on myself and I don't really like using patterns and doing things from scratch. So I just have this simple cotton dress that I thrifted and I'm just going to work off of this. It just makes it so much easier that I get to just decorate it instead of just create it from scratch. I'm going to start this process by adding pieces of vintage lace and other, you know, embroidering things like that to the top part of the dress until a little lower than the waist. And I have all this lace. I always have lace around. I get it from eBay and thrift stores, things like that. And I will be cutting it up and just kind of pinning it where I want. And I'll show you how that looks. I'm pinning on a little bit of the lace that I cut. And I'm working on basically what will be the bottom layer. And when I get a few chunks, I haven't really started on the back yet, but when I get some of the main bottom layer all pinned on, I'll go to my machine and I'll sew it. And um, when I'm done with that, then I'll sort of start putting a little more details in and kind of the second layer. And what I did here basically is just cut out like a rectangle from my lace runner, cut out two, pin them on. This little piece of lace here was from just a 
piece of vintage linen. I don't know if it's vintage or not, but it had pretty kind of lace at the edge, and I cut that off and pinned it here. I'm kind of lucky that this dress already had some lace on it, my base dress. So I'll continue working, and I'll show you when I get the first layer sewn. Here's the pretty little slip skirt that I showed you that was in the box. Here's what I have so far. I'm creating basically my shape and I'm filling in the majority of the top part of the dress. And then I'll go in with more details, but it's easier just to do the bigger chunks first and get the shape you want. I want to drop waist and I want it to kind of come, not to a sharp point in front, but I kind of want it to come down and up and around. And then in the back, I want this to come down the sides, down the rear end. But see, all of this I'm going to fill in next with um, my second layer. And I'll give you a little example of what I'm going to do. So, I don't know if you can see this. See how this kind of, you know, that's not so pretty. I just wanted my large chunks on there first. But like now I'll take like another piece of this lace that I used here and I'll start making this really pretty and covering up all the kind of unattractive edges. Let's see, I'm trying to find a way for you to see that. Do you see? There. Then I'll just sew on little details like that. I'll just kind of go around and see what I need to make it pretty. So here's what it looks like with the second layer added. And what I'm going to do now is I want the back of this to look like like a crisscross lace up corset sort of look. And what I need to do is I need something to crisscross my ribbon through. I want like a kind of a wide-ish satin ribbon when I'm all done. And what I'm going to do is so I've been cutting on this a little bit, this table runner. And at the very end of the scallops, there's enough room there to put a ribbon through. So what I'm going to do is cut off kind of in a straight line along here and use that for my ribbon. I will sew that little piece on on each side and then I'll be able to crisscross my ribbon. I'll show you what that looks like when I get it sewn on. Okay, so I have my little strips sewn on and there's the holes for the ribbon. I'm not going to put the ribbon in yet. It'll just get in my way when I do the rest of the sewing. Um, what I did was I did a zigzag stitch down the very edge and down the middle. I want that to be sturdy because the ribbon will be pulling kind of tight on that want to make sure it's durable. So you can see that I sewed that at an angle. And the reason is because I won't need as much pulled in at the chest. I'll need a lot more pulled in around the waist. And my thought process is hopefully when I get it on and pull it the way it needs to be, these will appear straight. If I sewed them on straight, then they definitely would be at a weird angle because I need so much more pulled in down here than I do at the chest. So I sewed that at an angle. The wedding dress um, that I'm upcycling has this pretty sequin and beaded embellishment on the front. And I'm going to remove that and I will sew it on the front of my dress 
and I cannot find my seam ripper. So I'm just going to carefully remove it. There's not a lot of stitching holding it on here, so it's pretty easy. Here's the little embellishment that I took off the old wedding dress. And I'm going to hand sew it about right here in sort of a V on this dress. Now what I'm going to do is start working on the bottom of the dress. And I want it to be sort of a fringy layered look. And this is where I'll start cutting the wedding dress. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the tool on the new dress, but before I get to that, I need to cut off this lace, which I definitely will be using too. So I'm just going to cut at the waistline. I said I was going to start on the bottom, but I started playing with my jewelry to embellish the front and I thought this would be a good time to show you what I'm doing. I typically would sew this on right now before I get all the fringes sewn on, but because I need daylight to film these tutorials, I'm going to lay it out, show you what it looks like, and then when I sit down for the night and watch TV and stuff, I'll just sew this on. Um, what I'm doing here is I just wanna jazz this up. A lot of, like this is vintage, what I did was take pieces, like this is an earring, and I will sew, I'll hand sew all these on so they kind of look like one big embellishment. And so this is part of a bracelet, like the ones down here. And this is just an old brooch. But when you kind of piece them together, they really look cool. And then down here, I just have an earring and this is part of a bracelet that was on elastic that I just cut the pieces off. I'll have to sew each one of those individually. Um, and then this is just a little brooch. I have rhinestones. I need to replace a rhinestone there and I'll set that in the middle of the earring. So I'll lay it out perfectly before I start sewing, but that gives you an idea what I'll be doing. I'm gonna give you one more helpful hint when you sew, if you're going to sew embellishments on yours, jewelry use the color of the jewelry not the color of the dress like I won't use white to sew these on I'll use like a gold colored thread how I'm going to start the bottom of my dress is kind of like the top part I do things in layers so the first layer will be tulle and what I did was cut a ton of tulle off the dress the wedding dress and I cut it into like probably between three and seven inches. They're all going to be a little different. They're not perfect, they're jagged. I just hurry, you know, did a quick job on it because the more kind of imperfect they are, kind of the cuter they're going to look on here. Um, and I cut a ton. And so what I will do when I go to my, my machine is put my dress in there and I won't pin any of this on. I'll just have a pile sitting by my machine and I'll just start sewing that on. Now, this lace line that I have, I'm going to go about um, probably half an inch down from there and I'll sew all my tool and I will overlap it as I go. And I'll just kind of eyeball it as I go to see how thick it is. Um, and if I don't have enough on there, I can just go around again and add more tool. Okay, just want to let you know, I'm going to do a zigzag stitch on this just because tool is just kind of thin and zigzag just helps it stay on. And then I want to let you know too, a lot of people ask me what kind of machine I use. I started sewing about 23 years ago and I bought the most inexpensive brother machine that I could find because I didn't want to spend a lot of money and I wanted it to be user friendly. And I've stuck to the inexpensive brother for 23, 24 years. 
I do not like to change. I don't like to learn new. I will learn new things. I don't like to. So, you know, if you don't have a sewing machine and you're watching this and you're like, you know, I'd really like to learn how to sew. This is a great machine to start with. And I'm going to put a link to it in my description below. Here it is with the tool sewn on. And I forgot to tell you, I think that I cut these into 36 inch strips, 36 inches long. And so now that we have this on, I want to do strips of lace and I cut all the lace from the wedding dress into four inch strips that are 36 inches long. Now that is approximate because they do not have to be perfect. And mine are all jagged. I just cut them so fast and that's part of the look. That's perfectly okay. And so this is all the lace that was on the dress and it won't be enough. And plus I want different textures and colors anyway. So remember that skirt that was in the box with the eyelet trim and the embroidery. I cut that 36 inches long. The rest are going to be two inch wide strips. So I did the skirt. I just did a table runner and then a tablecloth. So I have all this lace and the plan is hopefully I have enough to overlap it a little bit. I will sew all this lace on. I'll have it kind of laid out on a chair by my sewing machine and I'll sort of alternate the different laces. Most, the most lace I have is from the wedding dress. So maybe I'll go two pieces of wedding dress lace and one of these and I'll just alternate depending on how much I have here. And I will go, this time I want to butt right up to that line of the lace from the bodice and slightly overlap. I would rather see you overlap it than go too low on it. Just a teeny bit overlap because we don't want to lose that shape. So I will go to my machine and I will do that. Just going to overlap it a little bit and hope we have enough. Here I have the lace sewn on and I had just enough. It's getting more full and so pretty. So. The tool was the first layer, the lace was the second layer. Now I'm going to add one more layer and I call it the decoration or the embellishments. And I'm just gonna add a bunch of stuff. I have a pretty big stash cause I've been sewing for a long time. Um, I'm going to add, and I cut everything 36 inches long. It's just some pretty beaded ribbon that I have. And I'm going to add fringe. And then when they hang this way, it makes it kind of just kind of angelic and soft looking. And then I just have these. It's sort of the tool. My tool had a big ruffle at the bottom. And when you cut the ruffle off, it leaves this tool with tiny little ruffles and I'll add those just for some extra dimension and texture. And then what I'm going to show you here is I made these and they're 36 inches long and it's kind of like a flower. Um, I took a piece of tool, uh, 36 inches long and I started it at the end of my machine. And as I went down, of course, I, I sewed some ribbon bows here and there. But how I made these and sewed them on is I took two pieces of tool. And they're about 10 by 10. And then I grabbed the center and just sort of pulled it like this. And then I ran the very end 
through my machine as I'm taking this big strip down the sewing machine. So then we'll have fun little fun. So what I'll do to get all this sewn on, I'll take it all back over to my machine. I always lay it over a chair and I just sort of alternate so that they're kind of equally, like the flowers are equally around the ribbon. And I'll just go around one more time and just alternate these fun little details. Okay, so now I have the bottom completely done. And what I'll do now is I'll go sew all that jewelry on. It's the end of the day for me. And then um, when I come back, I'll show you what that looks like. And then we'll turn it around and we'll take the ribbon and lace up the back. And that'll be it. But I just want to tell you one thing about lace. So a lot of people say they have trouble finding lace. And yes, it's hard to find like vintage runners and things like that. But for a project like this, where you're going to be cutting it up, um, when you go to the thrift store, look for curtains, uh, lace curtains, lace tablecloths, lace shirts, tops. You know, even lace tops have fun embellishments that maybe you could find and use on a project. Lace skirts, lace dresses. So just kind of open your mind a little bit when you're shopping and kind of look everywhere for lace. And it's a lot easier to find that way than like vintage table runners. Those are kind of tricky. This is what the jewelry looks all sewn on. Okay, so here's the back all laced up. I used a cream colored satin ribbon. It's one inch wide. I used the whole roll. I left the back um, long or the bottom long and I just weaved it in and out of that piece of lace, kind of like a shoestring.